Hello, this is Antipras Television News Headlines. I am Kemi Omoshibi. The World Bank Group on Monday commended the strategy of the Nigerian government in the implementation of economic recovery and growth plan. The ERGP was launched in 2017 to restore growth by diversifying the economy, stabilizing the microeconomic environment, investing in infrastructure and improving the country's business environment. The bank said in a statement that its executive directors who visited Nigeria to meet with top officials of the government were encouraged by the growth plan. Enterprise Television learned that the delegation of 10 executive directors from the World Bank Group visited Nigeria to get a better understanding of the country's development priorities with a special focus on the energy sector. Nigerian crude oil production, including condensate, reached 2,069 million barrels per day in April 2018. This is according to data from the Federal Ministry of Petroleum Resources. Though there is a slight increase from the 2.022 million barrels per day the country recorded in March. This means Nigeria is still struggling to step up production to meet the 2.3 million barrels per day benchmark proposed in the 2018 budget. Enterprise Television gathered that the country has short four of 278,000 barrels per day from the 2.3 million barrels per day budget benchmark for 2018. The ministry which made the disclosure in its monthly oil and gas report released recently put the country's gas production at 7.98 billion standard cubic feet during the month on the review. Zimbabwean government has increased its civil service pay hike offer to 15% in a bid to avert a strike. Unions have rejected an initial 10% increment but held back on the industrial action pending consultations with members and fresh talks with the employer. The ZANU PF administration returned with an approved offer of the second meeting of the National Joint Negotiating Council on Monday. APOS Council President Cecilia Alexander said the National Joint Negotiating Council meeting held on Monday saw government improving its offer from 10% to 15%. However, President of the Progressive Teachers Union of Zimbabwe, Raymond Mojangwe, this means the new government offer as insignificant. Kenya's Trade Principal Secretary Chris Kiptu says Kenya will not sign a free trade agreement. Kipti on Monday said the decision would trigger diplomatic unease between Nairobi and Beijing. Enterprise Television gathered that the current trade balance is skewed heavily in favor of China, and the proposed comprehensive free trade agreement would see China's good access to the ESC market at a favorable tariff. China has been negotiating for the creation of a free trade agreement with ESC for the past two years. China also requested to undertake a joint feasibility study with the ESC on the proposed free trade area. However, the ESC Secretariat was expected to undertake a comprehensive cost-benefit analysis on the implications of negotiating a free trade agreement with third parties by June 30. And on the foreign scene, U.S. President Donald Trump has justified this pledge to help the Chinese ZTE get back into business after critics claimed he was back enough. He said through a tweet on Monday that the country is working on a larger trade deal and the Chinese tech firm buys many parts from the U.S. The U.S. has banned American companies from selling parts to ZTE after it admitted to making illegal shipments to Iran and North Korea. But the U.S. will now consider alternatives to the supplier ban. However, Trump among the reference to trade talks to explain the change. On the entertainment scene, it is no news that the Marvel studio is making a lot from their recent movie, Avengers Infinity War, as the studio continues to beat all hearts and expectations, gathering north of $2.94 billion worldwide. However, the number will top $3 billion sometime this week as Avenger Infinity War continues to dominate the bus office in just about every market. Enterprise Television learned that by weekend, Infinity War will top $1.78 billion and could sit around $1.8 billion, ensuring Marvel's year to year date tally exceeds $3.1 billion by next Sunday. This figure points towards a strong possibility Infinity War could eat $2 billion by the end of its theoretical run. If that happens, Marvel Studios will top $3.4 billion worldwide this summer, a remarkable figure for a studio with only two releases in the marketplace. Evacuate the city. Engage all defenses. And get this man a shield. And that's it on Enterprise Television News headlines for today. 
For more news of this special report and our shows, visit our website www.enterprisetv.tv, our social media platform, our list there for your on ground information in the world of business. I am Kemi Omonshibi. Many thanks for watching.